mind of Christ is not just selfless and it's not just humble, but it is one of utter trust, complete surrender, not only devotion, but dependence upon the will of the Father. The mind of Christ is not one of discernment and understanding. And that's what we want it to be, right? The mind of Christ understands all the secrets. The mind of Christ knows what's happening here and what's happening there. But the mind of Christ is not one of, of, of mysticism. It's one of practicality. It's not about discernment. It's about obedience. Jesus didn't just do what the Father told him. He trusted the Father in every situation of his life. How many times did Jesus say that he only came to do the will of the Father, right? He had his opponents told him what to do. I only came to do the will of the Father. His disciples told him what to do. I only came to do the will of the Father. Even his own mother told him what to do. And he said, I've only come, my time has not come because I've only come to do the will of the Father. Again, when Mary asked him at Canaan, you know, do something, basically. They're out of line. Do something about it. Woman, my time has not yet come. And, and sometimes we'll try to act like because he changed the water to the wine that Mary must have changed his mind. He was just making it clear. I'm not doing this because you asked. I'm doing it because the Father told me to. There's such a difference in understanding that. That it's not Mary's intercession didn't change the mind of God. Jesus was making it clear that you are praying God's mind. Like Mary was more in step with the Father than she realized. So when she asked it of Jesus, it was God's heart. And so that's why Jesus did it. Don't change his mind because we ask and ask and ask. But if we stay in prayer, we'll have, our hearts will be changed until we are aligned with his wants and his will. His brothers told him, go to, go to Jerusalem and do miracles. He said to them, it's not my time. And then when Peter, at the end, decided to fight for him, what did he say? It is my time. His will was always, his, his life was always given to the will of the Father, no matter what was going on around him or what the people that loved him thought he should be doing. Jesus obeyed the Father because he trusted him. He valued the Father's thoughts because he was sure of the Father's heart. And this may be the secret to all of it. And I believe this may be what David was realizing in Psalm 139. Jesus knew one thing above everything else. The Father loved him. That's the one thing he knew above all else. In John 3.35, Jesus said the Father loves the Son and has placed everything in his hand. In John 5, 20, he said, for the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he does. In John 15, verse 9, on, the, on Jesus' way out, he said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Jesus didn't question every circumstance in his life because he was confident in the Father's love. He didn't get overwhelmed when his plans failed because he knew the Father's love would never fail him. He didn't revert to past behavior and dive into unhealthy thoughts when he didn't get his way because he trusted that God's way was birthed in and overflowing with love. He made the Father's thoughts precious because he didn't allow anything in him or around him to raise doubts about the Father's love. We will never get where we want to be if we don't settle this in our hearts. God loves me. And I know it sounds elementary, and we say it all the time, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. But until you believe in the love of Jesus, you can't trust him, you won't follow him, and good luck obeying. 